Hello and welcome to another episode from the water's edge. You catch up with us today about 20 to 30 minutes into a session and we're into our first better fish of the session. We've already had a couple of little roach and lovely little crucian and in today's episode we're going to be fishing the traditional waggler sort of back to old school is where everyone well certainly myself and probably most people started they're fishing as a youngster so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on getting this fish in and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about what we're doing the baits we've got and how we're hopefully planning for the session to unfold well there we are not been fishing too long as we said and already a nice little common for the camera Always starts off with the guaranteed few roach to start with. I said that lovely little cruising. But now we're into a carp. But the lake we're on today is full of absolutely everything. So when that float goes under, we have no idea what it's going to be. But that is the beauty of it. I love little venues like that where you really don't know what you're going to catch. So let's slip this fella in the net and we'll talk you through what we're doing. Well, there we are, he's safely in the net. So let's uh, talk you for a little bit more about what we're doing today. And um, personally, I suppose for me, it's a bit of back to where it all began for me. So recently, what's been happening is I've been fishing a lot of big qualifiers, Fisher Mania qualifiers, Maver Match Disc qualifiers, which are really expensive, really high pressure. And I've sort of lost a bit of what it was all about, where it all started from. So today that's what we're down here to do, to touch back on how everything began and that's why I've chosen to fish the traditional waggler, sort of like peacock waggler and that's probably, well certainly for me, probably for most people is where it all started. I can remember my mum and dad, even my nan taking me just to really easy lakes but just fishing a standard straightforward waggler and catching everything that swims. And I was just chatting to Chris on the way here because we knew we were going to fish like this and been trading stories about the first fish he caught was also on the waggler. It's just taking things right back to basics. There's nothing complicated at all, but it's just not forgetting what fishing was all about and what made us fall in love with the sport to start with. So let's have a little look at the rig. And like I said, it is extremely simple. I've even got my old Dial Harrier rod out. This is probably, well, it was one of the first rods I ever brought. So I've had it since I started fishing. Uh, you don't need to be complicated so it's just a 13 foot float rod die reel i prefer little double handles it doesn't matter whatsoever i just think much more easier to control and it's just whatever your preference you're used to we then come down to six pound main line and it doesn't get more simple than that so we've got an old school peacock waggler i think they obviously nowadays they make them out of many different things like crystal wagglers and stuff like that there's the clear but the old school for me is a peacock waggler just nipped on there with a couple of shots with a very small gap in between just so when I'm first initially striking I'm not striking through the lead as well that float's got a little bit of movement to let me connect with that fish before we hit any sort of resistance from the shot that float is attached on a little rubber float stop which you can just pull your float on and off with so we've got a bit of wind today but if that wind does pick up it's going to allow me just to change to a slightly heavier float because the last thing you want to do is start catching a load of fish and then find that you can't reach the spot that you were fishing on. That then comes down to, if I just unhook this from the reed down here, comes down to a little bulk of number sixes and then we've also got a couple of droppers down there to a small size 16 hook, nice and sharp, but again, nothing complicated about that rig whatsoever. So. I've, what I've done is I've already started fishing. We've had a little fish and I've plumbed up. We've got two different patches of lilies, one to my left, one to my right, and luckily they're the same depth, so I can use the same rig and I can just flick between the two. I'm gonna be flicking all sorts of baits over it. We've got hemp, maggots, casters, pellets, just a big array of, of anything that fish like to eat. Like I said, I really don't mind what I catch today. I just want that float to go under and I wanna feel what I did all them years ago when I first started, because at the moment I'm getting a bit soul destroying, 
drawing away from fish and not actually enjoying the fishing. So right back to the roots and catching absolutely anything that swims. So what I'll do is I'll just pop a couple of maggots on. I probably will fish maggot for most of the day. It catches the biggest variety of fish and there is all sorts of fish. I've fished this lake before and I think we've done 11, 12, 13 species in a day. So you really, when that float goes under, you really have no idea what you're gonna catch. And that is the beauty about it. Simple method, simple baits, and just a really enjoyable day's fishing. And there's one just topping the peg. So let's get back out there and see if we can have another one on the camera. Well, the float's just dipped ever so gently and we're into another fish. I wouldn't really like to guess what it is. I'd never get it right with so many species being in here. It's just an impossibility. Oh, it's actually quite a nice carp, to be honest. Let's just try and coach him in gently. Wallowing around. Just before that bite we had a little tiny patch of bubbles come up and normally to be honest I was expecting to be a tenshaw for cruising because they, they blow them real little tiny bubbles they're digging around the silt picking out probably little bits of hemp that I'm feeding but not a cruision, not a tench, a nice mirror. who behaved really well when we hooked him but doesn't want to come in now he's near the net this time there we are he's in there we are getting a bit tangled up in a line we'll just slip that hook out and hold him up for you hooked ever so nicely in the bottom lip come back and there we are. We a couple of tiny little roach in between the carp that we show you in this one. But finally something a bit bigger to show you on camera. And I'm finally getting back into the fish. Let's get back out there. Have a little roach. We're getting a few bites now. Look, seeing a few more bubbles come up. Like I said, it's the beauty of it is I don't know when that float goes under, literally what it's going to be. It tends to sort of fill the quiet spaces with roach, and then the float goes under and it's something a bit bigger. So it's so enjoyable. I mean, it's worth a mention while I'm out of the water and now casting that a little way to just sort of hopefully make sure you're getting the same spot every time for me it's okay because i'm fishing next to lily so i can see where the float sits but if you notice i cast well past my spot and then i'll reel back three or four turns of the handle really fast to sink that line and just before the end just a real flick of your rod tip just sinks that last little bit so basically i mean you can see there's a little bit of wind today it's not too bad but in a windy condition you're sinking all that line so your wag that doesn't move if you didn't do that you'd have to cast every 20 30 seconds probably as the wind drags your float and your line out of the peg and your, your float would actually be moving which isn't good presentation at all so it's quite important to get that line sunk when you are just fishing with the rod and line and a traditional waggler sort of style of fishing that's probably the biggest thing i could mention is to make sure that happens and then all i'm doing is pretty much every cast or every other possibly 
I'm just flicking a few bits of bait over. Mostly I'm feeding hemp and pellet. Tends to be a real good holding bait for fish to have a real good feed on. And then I'm just a couple of red maggots over the hook. I'm just working the swims between left and right. Like I said, at the moment it's just been a few roach after them carp earlier on. But there's plenty of movement on these lilies of little kicks and that, the lilies are knocking. So there's, there's bigger fish there. Nice to get into some of the tench that I certainly know are in it that we've caught in the past. I think it's just a case of plodding along, keep that bait trickling in. If you keep fishing that same spot, eventually you're going to get a real competition for food. Another nice looking carp hits the net. We've had a nice little busy spell to be honest. We've had a few roach, an eyed, another cruisian. No tens yet, but just nice little continuous sport. Not hectic, having to work at the bites, dripping that feed in, switching from side to side, but we are getting the odd reward. So even the sort of bit of a ghost in him, I would say, is a bit white speckles in his fin and that really nice markings and like I said a, a perfect little size you don't always have to be out chasing these huge fish it's just out having some fun and really understanding what fishing's all about let's get another bait out there and there we are get another bait on ready. What I have been doing also, probably for the last sort of half an hour to an hour, is just to my left I've got a really quite a nice margin actually and I've just been chucking a few pellets down there, nothing too heavy, just a, the odd pinch here and there and we've seen a few fish in there so I might have a go down there a bit later on but the only thing is obviously you're pretty confident you know it's going to be a carp, we can see them, we've seen some tails down there you know exactly what it's going to be and at the moment I'm quite enjoying just fishing out there and not really knowing what's going what's to come next so I'm going to just keep plugging away at what we've been doing fish them lilies sink the line and feed every single time just little and often try and get some bait going in and like I said at the moment we're just putting a nice steady run of fish together a nice little mixed bag and it is a beautiful day to do it as well. Sun's really got out and you can tell we're now getting into summer, which has been a long awaited for, I can tell you for me, fishing really hard winter matches recently. There we are, another fish comes to net, another little cruising. I love these fish, they're so pretty, just beautiful bars of gold. We've got a bit of a motocross going on in the background. It's all kicking off, but uh, yeah, a real steady run of fish, beautiful day's fish. I just, just before this, we slipped a little barbel into net as well, so that's another species of today. But yeah, just brilliant to be out here and back to basics catching fish. I don't think we're going to give it too much longer, I'll just slip him in the net. We'll probably have another couple of fish and then we'll call it a day. Like I said, a good few hours at it at a real leisurely pace with absolutely no pressure. You can't beat it a day's pleasure fishing. Well, there we have it. The end of a cracking day's fishing. Three nice carp and a real mixed bag, cruisians, barbel, roach, the lot. And like I said, for me, not fishing a waggler for I don't know how many years is a real blast from the past and a cracking day sport. The only difference I have noticed I didn't get in a tangle every time I've cast, so I've obviously improved since I was a kid. But let's get these slip backs. As always, a big thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one.
Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us today, about 20 to 30 minutes into a session, and we're into our first better fish of the session. We've already had a couple of little roach and lovely little crucian, and in today's episode, we're going to be fishing the traditional waggler, sort of back to old school, is where everyone, well, certainly myself and probably most people, started. They're fishing as a youngster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on getting this fish in and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about what we're doing, the baits we've got and how we're hopefully planning for the session to unfold. Back to where it all began for me. So recently what's been happening is I've been fishing a lot of big qualifiers, Fisher Mania qualifiers, Maver Match Disc qualifiers which are really expensive, really high pressure, and I've sort of lost a bit of what it was all about, where it all started from. So today that's what we're down here to do, to touch back on how everything began, and that's why I've chosen to fish the traditional waggler, sort of like peacock waggler, and that's probably, well certainly for me, probably for most people, is where it all started. I can remember my mum and dad, even my nan taking me just to really easy lakes, but just fishing a standard straightforward waggler and catching everything that swims and I was just chatting to Chris on the way here because we knew we were going to fish like this and been trading stories about the first fish he caught was also on the waggler it's just taking things right back to basics there's nothing complicated at all but it's just not forgetting what fishing was all about and what made us fall in love with the sport to start with so let's have a little look at the rig and like I said it is extremely simple I've even got my old Daiwa Harrier rod out, I, this is probably well, it was one of the first rods I ever brought so I've had it since I started fishing but you don't need to be complicated so it's just a 13 foot float rod, Daiwa reel, I prefer little double handles it doesn't matter whatsoever I just think much more easier to control and it's just whatever your preference you're used to. We then come down to 6 pound mainline and it doesn't get more simple than that so we've got an old school peacock waggler I think they obviously nowadays they make them out of many different things like crystal wagglers and stuff like that that's a clear but the old school for me is a peacock waggler just nipped on there have a couple of shot with a very small gap in between just so when I'm first initially striking I'm not striking through the lead as well that float's got a little bit of movement to let me connect with that fish before we hit any sort of resistance from the shot that float is attached on a little rubber float stop which you can just pull your float on and off with so we've got a bit of wind today but if that wind does pick up it's going to allow me just to change to a slightly heavier float because the last thing you want to do is start catching a load of fish and then find that you can't reach the spot that you were fishing on that then comes down to if I just unhook this from the reed down here comes down to a little bulk of number sixes and then we've also got a couple of droppers down there to a small size 16 hook, nice and sharp, but again, nothing complicated about that rig whatsoever. So I've, what I've done is I've already started fishing. We've had a little fish and I've plumbed up. We've got two different... Well, there we are. Not been fishing too long, as we said, and already a nice little common for the camera. Always starts off with the guaranteed few roach to start with I said that lovely little cruisian but now we're into a carp but the lake we're on today is full of absolutely everything so when that float goes under we have no idea what it's going to be but that is the beauty of it I love little venues like that where you really don't know what you're going to catch so let's slip this fella in the net and we'll talk you through what we're doing there we are he's safely in the net so let's uh, talk you for a little bit more about what we're doing today and um, personally i suppose for me it's a bit of